The Denobulans were utterly fucked, reeling from the merciless Zorgoth invasion, until a whisper of hope came. Maybe the humans would save them. Rhaegor slumped in his command chair, the distress call flickering on repeat as the Zorgoth warships hammered his homeworld from orbit. No one was coming to help. The Galactic Council had voted to let his people burn, to let Denobula become another conquered world in the Zorgoth Empire. Aragor had already begged the Council to send a fleet to protect the Denobulans' advanced technology from falling into Zorgoth claws. The other Council members called Denobula a lost cause. None would risk ships against Zorgoth might. Disgust simmered in Rigor's stomach, spineless cowards and traitors, all of them. A comping pulled Riga from his despair. A sole message from some primitive race called humans. They were the only ones left who hadn't responded to the distress call. Riga had never even heard of these humans before, some backwater upstarts, but they were his people's last hope. On Earth, Ryan Phillips read the classified memo again. Save the Denobulans. The brass wanted him to lead some desperate rescue op into a goddamn war zone. After he'd lost his whole team on the last mission, Ryan had barely managed to scrape together a dishonorable discharge instead of a court-martial. He still saw Mikey's blood on his hands in his nightmares. Leading men to their deaths again made bile rise in his throat. But this was a shot at redemption. Maybe the only one Ryan would get. Humans needed a win after that mess on Kepler 22b. The Galactic Council treated humanity like a joke. Time to prove that humans were the biggest badasses in the galaxy. Time to show what humans were really made of. Then the encrypted warning scrolled across Ryan's implant. The distress call was a trap. The Zorgoth had the Council in their scaly claws. But how could Ryan abandon a whole species to extinction... He had to take the risk. The Denobulans needed the humans to come. Their survival depended on it. Humanity's reputation depended on it. This mission would change everything, for better or worse. Ryan just prayed it wouldn't be a fatal mistake. Ryan took a deep breath. The warning scrolling across his implant made his guts churn. This mission stank of a setup. Walking his team into a trap made his trigger finger itch. But the Denobulans needed the humans' help, and humanity needed a win. Fuck it, he muttered. We're doing this. He pulled up his contacts and punched in a few names. Time to get the band back together. Jack Boomer Briggs picked up on the first ring. The crazy bastard was probably elbow deep in date cord and blasting caps. Hey, Rye, you son of a bitch, what's the job? Boomer's booming voice filled the line. Some alien fuckheads called the Zorgoth are about to genocide a planet. I need the best demolitions man in the galaxy to help me stop him. You in? Shit, yeah, I'm in. It's boring as hell since you got discharged. Let me grab my gear. Next was Alex Hawk Hawkins, best sniper Ryan had ever seen. She could nail a gnat's ass at two clicks. This better be good, Ryan, Hawk's sultry voice purred. I'm in the middle of a mani-pedi. Ryan rolled his eyes. Fucking diva. I need you for a rescue mission, Hawk. Millions of lives at stake. Hostile aliens, impossible odds, the usual. Mm, I do love a challenge, Hawk mused. Meet you at the ship in twenty. Last was Dr. Liam Hoffman. Mad scientist didn't even begin to cover it. But they needed Hoffman's big brain for this. Dr. Hoffman speaking. A chipper British voice answered. Dark, it's Ryan. That new cloaking tech still need field testing. So I guess, are you proposing an experiment? How exciting, Hoffman babbled. Yeah, we're gonna experiment sneaking past a fucking alien armada. Pack your bags, Doc. Outstanding, I'll ready my equipment forthwith. Ryan sighed as he clicked off the comm. His hand-picked Dream Team, ready to kick ass and save the galaxy. The ship was stocked and fueled within the hour. Earth grew smaller and smaller in the view screen as they rocketed toward Denobula. Ryan's implant pinged with a new message. Unknown sender. More coordinates, this time for some nowhere planet in the arse end of space. Every instinct screamed it was a setup, but maybe this mysterious contact had critical intel. Ryan hated flying blind into a shitstorm. Change of plans, he called to the crew. We're making a stop. 
The ship shuddered as it dropped out of FTL. Ryan strode down the ramp, particle rifle in hand. Boomer, Hawk, and Hoffman fanned out behind him, eyes peeled for threats. The barren landscape stretched out in every direction, empty except for strange rock formations. Hawk's voice crackled over the comm. I've got movement, Southwest Sector. Multiple hostiles incoming. Blaster fire stitched the ground at Ryan's feet. He dove behind the nearest boulder, returning fire at the shadowy figures pouring over the ridge. Fucking Zorgoth assassins. And they'd led them right into a goddamn ambush. A hulking form lumbered out of the dust, a monstrous cyborg bristling with jagged blades and whirring guns. Shit, it's Titan, Boomer warned over the gunfire. Watch out for that arm cannon. Titan's gravelly voice boomed across the battlefield. The famous Ryan Phillips. I will take great pleasure in delivering your corpse to my masters. Sorry to disappoint you rejected Terminator prop, Ryan called back, but I've got a date with the Denobulans I'd hate to miss. Titan snarled, raising his arm cannon. The barrel glowed with deadly red light. Ryan barely rolled aside in time as a crackling beam vaporized the boulder behind him. Boomer popped up from cover, firing a plasma grenade. It latched onto Titan's shoulder and exploded, staggering the cyborg. Ryan and Boomer sprinted for better cover, weaving between withering blaster bolts. Ryan's eyes widened as he saw the sleek rifles the assassins carried. Those sure as fuck weren't standard Zorgoth blasters. That was cutting-edge shit, weapons even humans didn't have yet. How the fuck did the assassins get armed with tech like that? Ryan's mind raced as he slotted a fresh energy cell into his rifle. This whole thing stank worse than weak old roadkill. If these Zorgoth fucks were running around with fancy new guns, that meant someone was arming the bastards. Ryan would bet his left nut there was a traitor in the Galactic Council. Motherfuckers were probably helping the Zorgoth steamroll across the galaxy. The team battled their way back to the ship, Hawk's precision shots and Hoffman's gadgets keeping the assassins at bay. Ryan and Boomer laid down covering fire as the ramp hissed closed. The ship rocketed into the atmosphere, Titan's enraged roar echoing behind them. Forget the scenic route, Ryan growled. We're hauling ass straight to Denobula Prime. But as the ship hurtled through hyperspace, Ryan poured over the strange weapons they'd recovered from the assassins. He needed to figure out who was supplying the Zorgoth behind the Council's back. But that shitstorm would have to wait. The ship jolted as a barrage of turbo-laser fire hammered the shields. They'd reached Denobula and flown straight into a massive Zorgoth blockade in orbit. Regor's garbled distress call filled the cockpit, begging for help as the fleet pounded the planet's defences. Give me a sit rep now, Ryan barked. Hoffman's fingers flew over the sensor console. I'm detecting several Zorgoth capital ships, along with scores of fighters and bombers. They appear to be targeting key cities and defensive installations on the surface. We'll never punch through that blockade, Boomer said grimly. It's fucking suicide. We're not abandoning the Denobulans, Ryan snarled. Not when we're the only ones who showed up to save their asses. He racked his brain for a plan. The Zorgoth had them outgunned and outnumbered. A frontal assault was a one-way ticket to a body bag. They needed to slip past the fleet's defences to reach the planet. Dr. Hoffman's fingers danced across the console, the cloaking device thrumming to life. The ship shimmered and vanished from view, slipping between the hulking Zorgoth warships like a ghost. Hawk's eye never left her scope as she tracked the sensor arrays on the enemy vessels, Steady, Ryan murmured, his hands white-knuckled on the controls. Almost there. Hawk's rifle cracked, once, twice, three times. The sensor arrays sparked and went dark, blind eyes no longer seeking their invisible prey. We're through, Boomer crowed. But their elation died as they broke through the clouds above Denobula Prime. The once-gleaming cities lay in ruins, flames licking at the rubble. The twisted wreckage of Denobulan fighters littered the cratered landscape, a graveyard of shattered dreams. Ryan's jaw clenched as he guided the ship toward the coordinates Rigor had sent. The bunker doors ground open, revealing a ragtag band of survivors huddled in the shadows. At their head stood Rigor, his exoskeleton cracked and oozing. How you came, the Denobulan leader rasped. I feared all was lost. 
Ryan clasped Riga's shaking hand, meeting the alien's pain-filled eyes. We're here to help. What do you need us to do? Regor sagged against Ryan, his strength fading. The Zorgoth, they seek the Crucible, an ancient power hidden here. They, they will use it to create an invincible army. You must destroy it. With trembling fingers, Rega pressed a data crystal into Ryan's palm. The bunker's schematics, the Crucible's location. Only you can stop them now. Regor shuddered, a final breath rattling in his ruined chest. Ryan held him as he slipped away, the light dimming from his eyes. A thunderous boom shook the bunker, dust raining from the ceiling. The Zorgoth had arrived. We need to move, Ryan snarled, tucking the data crystal into his vest. Hoffman, pull up those schematics. Boomer Hawk, watch our six. Let's find this fucking crucible before the Zorgoth do. The team raced into the labyrinthine tunnels, the echoes of Zorgoth war cries nipping at their heels. They wove through the maze, following the twisting map flickering on Hoffman's hollow screen. The walls were lined with strange symbols, glowing faintly in the gloom. What is all this? Hawk wondered, her fingers tracing the alien glyphs. Some kind of research notes, I think, Hoffman muttered. I'm detecting massive energy readings up ahead. As they fought, Ryan's eyes caught on one of the symbols, a jagged shape that tugged at his memory. Where had he seen that before? The pieces clicked into place with sickening clarity. The ruins on Kepler 22b, the planet where he'd lost everything. The glyphs carved into the ancient stones, whispers of a power beyond imagining. And now here, in the heart of a Denobulan bunker, that same symbol staring back at him. What the fuck had the Denobulans been doing here? And what did it have to do with the crucible? Ryan shoved the questions aside as a plasma bolt seared past his cheek. They were close now, the schematics pulsing on Hoffman's screen. The crucible waited ahead, the key to the Zorgoth's conquest, the secret that had already cost Rigor and so many others their lives. Ryan gritted his teeth, tightening his grip on his rifle. Like fuck he'd let the Zorgoth have it, for Rigor, for Denobula, for every poor bastard who died fighting these scaly shitbags. Ryan and his team pushed deeper into the bunker, their boots pounding on the metal grating. The twisting corridors opened into a cavernous chamber, sealed behind a massive blast door. Hoffman's fingers danced over the access panel, the door groaning open with a hiss of hydraulics. The chamber beyond was a treasure trove of ancient relics. Dusty crates and containers lined the walls, stamped with faded earth logos. Ryan cracked open a crate, revealing gleaming devices and weapons more advanced than anything he'd ever seen. Hoffman, what the fuck is all this? Ryan demanded. The scientist's eyes were wide with wonder behind his glasses. This technology, it's centuries beyond anything we have now. How did it get here? A flicker of light drew their attention. A holographic figure materialized, a woman in a tattered pressure suit. Her helmet was cracked, her face smudged with grime. I am Dr. Elizabeth Shaw of the Prometheus Expedition, the recorded message began. If you are seeing this, then I pray you have come to destroy the Crucible. Ryan and Hoffman exchanged a stunned look as Dr. Shaw's story unfolded. The Crucible was no Denobulan relic, but the creation of an alien race that had seeded the stars when humanity's ancestors still huddled in caves. The Denobulans had sought to unlock its power, to elevate themselves but they had no idea of the forces they were tampering with. In the wrong hands, the crucible could bring untold destruction, Dr. Shaw warned, her voice shaking. You must destroy it no matter the cost. Do not let my sacrifice be in vain. The recording winked out, leaving them in stunned silence. Ryan's mind reeled with the implications. The mystery of Kepler 22b, the Zorgoth's sudden advanced tech, it all led back to this, to the crucible. The sound of blaster fire jolted them back to the present. Zorgoth soldiers poured into the room, their scales glinting in the dim light. At their head strode Titan, his metal limbs whirring with deadly purpose. You should have run, human, the cyborg sneered. Now you will watch your friends die before I rip the crucible from your corpse. Ryan's rifle snapped up, spitting plasma at the advancing Zorgoth. 
Boomer lobbed a grenade, scattering the soldiers, as Hawk picked them off one by one. But more kept coming, an endless tide of armoured bodies. Titan lunged at Ryan, his bladed arm slicing the air. Ryan ducked and rolled, firing point-blank into the cyborg's chest. Sparks flew as the plasma bolts ricocheted off Titan's armour. They traded blows in a deadly dance, fists and feet blurring. Titan's metal fist slammed into Ryan's ribs, driving the breath from his lungs. Ryan staggered back, his vision swimming. Titan pressed his advantage, bearing down on the wounded human. A scream tore through the chaos. Boomer crumpled to the ground, a plasma bolt sizzling through his gut. Hawk dashed to his side, firing one-handed as she dragged him to cover. Hoffman, get them out of here, Ryan shouted, ducking under Titan's swinging fist. Hoffman hauled Boomer to his feet, the big man's arm slung over his shoulders. Hawk laid down covering fire, her rifle cracking with deadly precision. What about you? she yelled over the din. Ryan surged to his feet, throwing himself at Titan in a flying tackle. They crashed to the ground in a tangle of limbs, grappling and gouging. Ryan's fingers scrabbled at Titan's shattered chestplate, ripping at the sparking wires beneath. With a howl of pain and rage, Titan threw him off, staggering to his feet. Ryan rolled to a crouch, his rifle trained on the cyborg's flickering optics. It's over, Titan, he panted. The crucible ends here. Titan's laughter grated like metal on bone. You are too late, human. The Zorgoth have already claimed their prize. When we add its power to our own, we will be unstoppable. Ryan's blood ran cold. He whirled, sprinting for the far door. His teammates were gone, escaped to the dubious safety of the bunker. He had to reach the crucible, had to destroy it before the Zorgoth could harness its terrible potential. The chamber housing the crucible thrummed with eldritch energies. The ancient device pulsed with malevolent light, tendrils of power arcing from its surface. A squad of Zorgoth technicians huddled around it, their instruments chittering and beeping. Ryan burst into the room, rifle blazing. The technicians scattered, their equipment exploding in showers of sparks. Ryan charged toward the crucible, his heart pounding in his ears. Just a few more steps and he could end this. Could save the Denobulans, the galaxy, everything. Static crackled over his comm, a voice filtering through the white noise, the same unknown voice that had tried to warn him away from this mission. Destroy the crucible, Ryan, the voice urged. Do it now, no matter the cost, it is the only way. Ryan hesitated, his finger hovering over the trigger. The crucible thrummed before him, its purpose as alien and incomprehensible as the beings that had created it. Ryan gritted his teeth, a snarl building in his throat. Damn it, he was a soldier, he had his orders. Even if it killed him, he would see this through. He raised his rifle, aiming at the crucible's shimmering core, one shot to save the galaxy. His calm crackled again, the mysterious voice replaced by a hauntingly familiar one. Ryan! Ryan, it's Mikey! Don't do it, man! There's another way! But if there was even a chance... Ryan's heart raced, his rifle lowering a fraction. Mikey! How, how are you alive? His voice cracked. I'll explain everything later, Ghost said urgently. But right now we've got a galaxy to save. Dr. Hoffman looked up from the pulsing crucible, his face bathed in its eerie glow. Ryan gritted his teeth, warring with himself. Trust a voice from beyond the grave or do what he came to do. All right, he ground out. What's the play? We overload the crucible, Ghost said. Use it to fry every piece of Zorgoth tech on the planet. Turn their weapons into so much scrap. Can it be done? Ryan asked. Hoffman nodded. Fingers flying over the crucible's control panel. I'll need time to recalibrate the energy output. You'll have to keep those Zorgoth bastards off my back. Ryan swung his rifle up as a fresh wave of soldiers poured into the chamber. I'm on it. Work fast, Doc. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air as Ryan hurled himself into cover. The Zorgoth pressed in, heedless of their fallen comrades. For every one Ryan dropped, two more surged forward, clambering over the bodies of the dead. 
Hoffman hunched over the crucible, cursing under his breath as he fought to bend the alien tech to his will. The artifact bucked and seethed, fighting him at every turn. Almost, almost got it, he shouted over the din. You should have run, human, Titan snarled. Now you will die. The mercenary lunged, his bladed arm slicing the air. Ryan ducked and rolled, firing point-blank into Titan's chest. The cyborg staggered back, sparks cascading from his rent armor. If I go down, Ryan spat, I'm taking you with me. They crashed together like titans, fists and feet hammering at metal and flesh. Ryan poured all his rage, all his grief into every blow, for his fallen friends, for the Denobulans, for every poor bastard ground beneath the Zorgoth's heel. Titan's metal fist cracked against his jaw, stars exploding across his vision. Ryan tasted blood, felt ribs crack as a booted foot slammed into his side, but he surged up, tackling the cyborg around the waist. They hit the ground hard, Ryan driving his knee into Titan's ruined chest. Metal crumpled, wires sparking as Ryan ripped at the mercenary's internals. Titan howled, metal claws raking bloody furrows down Ryan's back. But the human wouldn't relent, wouldn't give the bastard an inch. With a roar of fury and desperation, Ryan ripped free Titan's power core. The cyborg convulsed, optics flickering and fading. Ryan hurled the sputtering core away, sending Titan's lifeless husk toppling into the abyss below. The crucible surged, unleashing a blinding wave of energy that swept across the chamber. Ryan threw up an arm to shield his eyes as the pulse blasted outward, tearing through the bunker and into the sky above. Across the battlefield, Zorgoth weapons crackled and died, ships plummeting from the air as their systems fried. The invaders reeled, suddenly defenseless against the Denobulan counterattack. Ryan sagged against the crucible, blood dripping from his many wounds. He watched through bleary eyes as human dropships descended from orbit, disgorging fresh troops to beat back the Zorgoth horde. They were turning the tide, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. But something was wrong. The crucible shuddered beneath his hands, its surface cracking as arcs of energy lashed the air. The artifact was overloading, its power unraveling. We have to get out of here, Ryan yelled. This whole place is coming down. He grabbed Hoffman, hauling the protesting scientist toward the exit. The chamber collapsed behind them, the crucible vanishing in a maelstrom of fire and twisting metal. They ran, dodging falling rock and grasping hands as Zorgoth stragglers tried to drag them down. The tunnels echoed with the bunker's death knell, a rumbling roar that nipped at their heels. Light appeared ahead, a distant pinprick that grew with every desperate stride. Ryan put on a final burst of speed, hurling himself and Hoffman through the opening. They tumbled down the mountainside, the bunker imploding behind them in a geyser of smoke and flame. Ryan lay on his back, gasping for breath as the adrenaline faded. The crucible was gone, the Zorgoth in full retreat. But at what cost? Ryan? Ghost's voice crackled over the calm. Ryan, are you there? I'm here, Ryan coughed, struggling to sit up. We did it, the crucible's destroyed. And the Zorgoth. Running with their tails between their legs, but Mikey, the crucible, it was just the beginning, wasn't it? There's something else going on here, something big. Bigger than you can imagine, Ghost said grimly. But that's a problem for another day. Right now, you and your team need to get the hell off Denobula. I'm sending extraction coordinates. Ryan hauled himself to his feet, pulling Hoffman up with him. The scientist looked as battered as he felt, but there was a gleam of triumph in his eyes. Ryan shook his head, a wry grin tugging at his split lip. Not by a long shot, Doc. We've got a galaxy to save. The crucible's power surged wildly, the artifact spitting gouts of flame as the bunker quaked around them. Ryan's eyes met Hoffman's, the scientist's face a mask of grim determination. I'm open to suggestions here, Doc. Hoffman's fingers danced over the crucible's control panel, his brow furrowed in concentration. The readouts flickered and danced, the energy levels spiking into the red. I can't shut it down, Hoffman shouted over the din. It's too far gone. 
A burst of static crackled over Ryan's comm, Ghost's voice filtering through the chaos. Ryan's head snapped up, his gaze locking on the scientist. Hoffman nodded sharply, already moving. Go! I'll try to keep the crucible stable. Ryan sprinted from the chamber, plunging into the crumbling tunnels of the bunker. The walls shook, cracks racing along the ceiling as debris rained down around him. He ducked and wove, his rifle snapping up to drop the occasional Zorgoth straggler that stumbled into his path. He skidded around a corner, the power core chamber looming ahead. Blaster fire stitched the wall beside his head, Zorgoth soldiers pouring into the corridor. Ryan dove into cover, his heart hammering in his chest. He was out of time and out of options. A rifle cracked, one of the Zorgoth dropping like a puppet with its strings cut. Ryan risked a glance, his eyes widening at the sight of Hawk, crouched behind a sparking console, her rifle pressed to her shoulder. Blood matted her hair, her face a mask of pain and determination. Hawk! Ryan called, relief and worry warring in his chest. You okay? I'll live, she grunted, sighting down her scope. Boomer? Ryan shook his head grimly ducking as another plasma bolt sizzled overhead. Hawk's jaw tightened, her finger squeezing the trigger in response. Another Zorgoth fell, the sniper's aim true, even in her battered state. Ryan surged from cover, laying down a withering hail of fire as he charged towards the power core. Hawk fell in beside him, the two soldiers moving as one. They fought like demons, rifles flashing as they cut a path through the Zorgoth ranks. The power core loomed before them, a pulsing mass of energy and alien tech. Ryan ripped open a panel, his fingers flying over the unfamiliar controls. Ghost, I'm at the core, now what? There should be a series of conduits, Ghost's voice crackled. You need to manually link them to the crucible's energy output. Ryan cursed, his eyes scanning the tangle of wires and circuits. Hawk took up position at his back her rifle barking as she held the Zorgoth at bay. Hurry, Ryan! she yelled, slamming a fresh energy cell into her rifle. Ryan's fingers closed around a likely-looking cable, yanking it free from its housing. He jammed it into a port, the power core humming as it synced with the crucible. The artifact pulsed, the energy flow stabilizing for a heartbeat before surging to new heights. It's not enough! Ryan shouted, desperation clawing at his gut. The central conduit, Ghost urged. You need to connect the central conduit. Ryan tore at the panel, ripping through the maze of circuitry until his hand closed around a thick pulsing cable. He wrenched it free, the end sparking wildly as he drove it home into the waiting port. Slowly the light faded, leaving them in a darkness broken only by the fitful sparking of fried circuits, Ryan blinked, his vision swimming as he struggled to make out the shapes around him. Hawk stirred beside him, a groan slipping from her lips as she pushed herself upright. Did it work? she asked, her voice rough with pain and exhaustion. Before Ryan could answer, a figure emerged from the shadows. Titan loomed over them, his armor shattered and sparking, his remaining optic blazing with malice. The cyborg's movements were jerky, his systems clearly damaged, but the hatred in his gaze was undimmed. Ryan leveled his rifle at the cyborg, his finger tightening on the trigger. Start talking, you tin-plated fuck. Titan laughed, the sound grating and metallic. You're just pawns in a game you can't begin to understand. The Overseer has been pulling the strings from the beginning, the Zorgoth, the Council, all of it. The Overseer, Hawk demanded her own weapon trained on the mercenary. Who the fuck is that? You'll find out soon enough, Titan sneered. The crucible was just the beginning, a means to an end, and you've played your part perfectly. Ryan's finger tightened on the trigger, questions burning on his tongue. But before he could voice them, Titan's optic flared, his chassis beginning to hum with a rising whine. Fuck, Ryan cursed, realization dawning. He's rigged to blow. He grabbed Hawk, hauling her towards the exit as Titan's laughter echoed behind them. They sprinted through the crumbling tunnels, the whine of the cyborg's self-destruct growing louder with each passing second. 
They burst from the bunker just as the explosion ripped through the structure, a geyser of flame and debris mushrooming into the sky. The shockwave slammed into them, sending them tumbling across the scorched earth. Ryan rolled to a stop, his ears ringing, his body battered and bruised. He staggered to his feet, helping Hawk up as he surveyed the scene before him. Denobulan and human soldiers moved among the wreckage, tending to the wounded and rounding up the remaining Zorgoth. Cheers went up as they caught sight of Ryan and his team, the soldiers rushing forward to clap them on the back and offer their thanks. But even as he accepted their gratitude, Ryan couldn't shake the sense of unease that gripped him. Titan's words echoed in his mind, the spectre of this overseer hanging over their victory like a dark cloud. He turned to Hawk, his expression grim. This isn't over, not by a long shot. As if in answer, a Denobulan scout ship screamed overhead, the pilot's voice crackling over the comm. Captain Phillips, we've got incoming. A massive Zorgoth fleet just dropped out of hyperspace at the edge of the system. They're massing for an attack. Ryan's blood ran cold, his grip tightening on his rifle. He met Hawk's gaze, seeing his own realization mirrored in her eyes. The Battle of Denobula Prime had been just the opening salvo. The real war was about to begin. Ryan's calm crackled to life, Ghost's voice coming through with an edge of urgency. Ryan, we need to talk face to face, sending you coordinates now. Ryan glanced at the flickering display, his gut churning. Whatever Ghost had to say, it couldn't be good, not with a Zorgoth armada bearing down on them. He turned to Hawk, her face tight with pain and exhaustion. I need you to hold down the fort here, coordinate with the Denobulans, shore up our defences. I'll take Boomer and Hoffman to meet with Ghost. Ryan, Boomer, and Dr. Hoffman piled into a battered hover transport, the coordinates Ghost sent, guiding them into the war-torn wilderness. They sped past smoking craters and twisted wreckage, the once lush landscape now a blasted hellscape. The transport jolted to a stop at the edge of a camouflaged bunker, Ghost emerging from the shadows with a group of Denobulan scientists in tow. The lead scientist, a willowy figure with luminous eyes, stepped forward. I am Dr. Kelix, he said, his voice reedy but strong. We have been working on a weapon that may turn the tide of this war, the nullifier. Dr. Kelix's shoulders slumped. The only known source is a Zorgoth supply station, hidden in the Vortex asteroid field. Boomer let out a low whistle. That's a suicide run. The Vortex is a fucking meat grinder. Ryan's comm beeped, an urgent message scrolling across the screen. His blood ran cold as he read the words. The Zorgoth fleet just jumped in, system. They're hammering Denobula Prime. Ghost's eyes met Ryan's, a silent understanding passing between them. They both knew what had to be done. We're going after those crystals, Ryan said, his voice hard. It's our only shot at stopping this invasion. They boarded a captured Zorgoth shuttle, Hoffman working frantically to spoof the ship's IFF codes. The shuttle shuddered as it lifted off, angling toward the swirling maelstrom of the vortex. Asteroids slammed against the hull, the inertial dampeners straining to compensate. Boomer and Hoffman hunched over the console, plotting a course through the chaotic field. There! Ghost jabbed a finger at the sensor display, the supply station. The structure loomed ahead, a jagged metal spire bristling with gun emplacements. Boomer guided the shuttle into the docking bay, the team moving out in a practiced formation. Boomer Hoffman, plant the charges, Ryan ordered. Ghost and I will find the crystals. They split up, Ryan and Ghost threading their way deeper into the station. The corridors were eerily empty, the only sound the thrum of distant machinery. They emerged into a cavernous chamber, a massive cylindrical device dominating the center. Quantum crystals glittered in its core, pulsing with an otherworldly light. That's gotta be the planet killer Dr. Keelix mentioned, Ghost muttered. Let's grab the crystals and blow this place. Ryan eased the crystals free, the device's humming fading to silence. Alarms blared to life, the station shaking as Boomer's charges detonated. Time to move! Ryan barked, sprinting for the extraction point. A hulking figure stepped from the shadows, 
a Zorgoth in ornate armor, his eyes burning with recognition as they fixed on Ghost. Zeros, Ghost breathed, his rifle lowering a fraction. My old mentor. Zeros smiled, a cruel slash of teeth. I trained you to be a weapon, a tool of the Zorgoth Empire, and now you betray us. For what? These pathetic humans? Ghost's finger tightened on the trigger, conflict raging in his eyes. Ryan watched him, heart pounding, as the station shook itself apart. Ghost took a shuddering breath, his rifle snapping up to aim at Zeros's head. I'm not your weapon anymore. The shot echoed through the hangar, Zyros crumpling to the deck. Ghost stared at his body, his face a mask of pain and regret. Ghost! Ryan shouted. We have to go! Ghost shook himself, sprinting up the ramp as the shuttle lifted off. They rocketed away from the disintegrating station, weaving through the asteroids as the vortex swallowed the wreckage behind them. Ryan slumped against the bulkhead. The quantum crystals clutched tight in his fist. They had the key to the nullifier, a chance to save Denobula Prime. But as he watched Ghost stare into the void, Ryan couldn't shake the feeling that their greatest battles were still to come. Ghost stared down the barrel of his rifle, his finger hovering over the trigger. Zane's words echoed in his mind, the promise of power and influence tugging at the part of him that had once been loyal to the Zorgoth. For a moment he wavered, the weight of his past bearing down on him. Ryan's voice cut through the haze, sharp and urgent. Ghost, don't listen to him. Remember what we're fighting for, what we've been through together. He turned back to Zane, his jaw set. I'm not your puppet anymore, Zane. My loyalty lies with my team, with the people who have stood by me. The Zorgoth commander lunged, his blade flashing. Ghost squeezed the trigger, the rifle bucking in his hands. Zane staggered, a dark stain spreading across his chest. He fell to his knees, his eyes burning with hatred. You think you've won? Zane rasped, blood bubbling at the corners of his mouth. The Overseer is already on Denobula Prime, hidden among your allies. You'll never see the betrayal coming. With a final gurgling laugh, Zayn slumped to the ground, his eyes staring sightlessly at the ceiling. Ryan clapped a hand on Ghost's shoulder, the quantum crystals glinting in his other fist. We need to move, Hawk's waiting for us. They raced through the crumbling station, dodging falling debris and Zorgoth soldiers. The stolen ship loomed ahead, Boomer waving frantically from the ramp. Ryan and Ghost leaped aboard, the hatch slamming shut behind them. Dr. Hoffman's fingers flew over the controls, the ship shuddering as it tore free from the station's grip. They rocketed into the void, the asteroid field swallowing the disintegrating station behind them. Ryan's comm crackled to life, Hawk's voice laced with static. Ryan, do you read me? The Zorgoth have broken through our defenses. They're landing troops all over the planet. We can't hold them much longer. Ryan's grip tightened on the crystals. We're on our way, Hawk, just hold on. As they hurtled through hyperspace, Ryan's mind raced. The Overseer, here on Denobula Prime, a traitor in their midst, waiting to strike. The stakes had never been higher. They burst from the clouds above Denobula Prime, the once vibrant landscape now a war-torn hellscape, the Zorgoth's new superweapon loomed on the horizon, its massive barrel glowing with stolen crucible energy. As they watched, the weapon fired, a beam of searing light slicing through a Denobulan city. The explosion was devastating, the shockwave nearly knocking their ship from the sky. Ryan turned to Dr. Hoffman, his face grim. The nullifier, Dark, it's our only chance. Hoffman nodded his hands trembling as he loaded the quantum crystals into the device. It's ready, but we'll need to get close to the weapon to use it. Ryan turned to Ghost, a silent understanding passing between them. They knew what they had to do. They landed in the heart of the battle, the ship's ramp lowering to reveal a scene of utter chaos. Denobulan and human soldiers fought desperately against the Zorgoth horde, the air thick with smoke and the stench of death. At the center of the maelstrom stood Hawk, her rifle spitting fire as she rallied the beleaguered defenders. Ryan and Ghost charged down the ramp, their weapons blazing. They fought their way to Hawk's side, the four of them forming a tight knot of resistance against the Zorgoth onslaught. 
they pushed forward inch by bloody inch. Ryan and Ghost laid down a withering hail of cover fire, Boomer's grenades blasting holes in the Zorgoth ranks. Dr. Hoffman followed close behind, the nullifier clutched tight to his chest. The superweapon loomed ahead, its metal hide bristling with gun emplacements and Zorgoth soldiers. They hunkered behind a shattered wall, plasma bolts sizzling overhead. I need to get inside to plant the nullifier, Hoffman panted, his face streaked with sweat and grime. Ryan nodded, his jaw set. Ghost and I will clear a path. Hawk, Boomer, watch our backs. They surged from cover, Ryan and Ghost spearheading the charge. They moved like a well-oiled machine, their weapons spitting death, each covering the other without a word needing to be spoken. Zorgoth soldiers fell before them, their armor no match for the humans' desperate fury. They reached the base of the superweapon, Dr. Hoffman darting inside through a rent in the metal. Ryan and Ghost took up positions at the entrance, pouring fire into the Zorgoth ranks. Hurry, Doc, Ryan muttered through gritted teeth. We can't hold them forever. The minutes stretched into eternity, the tide of Zorgoth pressing closer with each passing second. Ryan's rifle clicked empty, his hand scrabbling for another energy cell. A massive explosion rocked the battlefield, a geyser of flame and debris erupting from the center of the Zorgoth lines. A figure strode from the smoke, his dark armor gleaming in the hellish light. The overseer's laughter boomed across the battlefield, cold and cruel. You fools, did you really think you could stop us? The Zorgoth's victory is inevitable. Ryan's finger tightened on the trigger, hatred boiling in his veins. But before he could fire, a blinding pulse of energy erupted from the superweapon, the nullifier, its purpose fulfilled at last. The Zorgoth's weapons sparked and died, ships plummeting from the sky as their systems failed. The tide of battle turned in an instant, the Denobulan and human forces surging forward with renewed determination. Zoran's face contorted with rage, his armor shimmering as he activated his personal shield. You've only delayed the inevitable. The Zorgoth will rise again, and I will be there to lead them. Zoran's cruel laughter echoed across the battlefield, his eyes glinting with malice. You fools. The Crucible's power was never meant for the likes of you. Join me, and together we will rule the galaxy. Ryan spat blood onto the scorched earth. His rifle aimed squarely at Zoran's chest. I'd rather die than join you, you traitorous bastard. The High Chancellor's face twisted into a sneer. So be it. He turned to the Zorgoth forces, his voice booming. Kill them all, but leave Ryan for me. The Zorgoth surged forward, their weapons blazing. Ryan and his team fought back with everything they had, plasma bolts filling the air. In the chaos, Ghost found himself face to face with Zane, the Zorgoth commander rising from the rubble like a nightmare made flesh. You should have stayed dead, Ghost growled, his rifle snapping up. Zakin laughed, the sound grating and metallic. I'm harder to kill than you think, traitor. They clashed in a whirlwind of fists and blades, Ghost's rifle against Zane's crackling energy sword. Ghost ducked and wove, his movements a blur as he dodged Zane's slashing attacks. Across the battlefield, Ryan, Hawk, and Dr. Hoffman fought their way towards the superweapon, Zorgoth soldiers falling before their desperate onslaught. But for everyone they cut down, three more took their place, an endless tide of scales and claws. High above, Boomer's ship wove through the aerial battle, his guns raking the Zorgoth fighters. But a lucky shot caught his wing, sending him spiraling towards the ground in a trail of smoke and flame. Ryan watched in horror as the ship vanished behind the tree line, a ball of fire erupting into the sky. Boomer, no! Hawk screamed, her rifle faltering. Ryan gritted his teeth, his heart aching for his fallen friend. But there was no time to mourn, not with Zoran so close to victory. We have to keep moving, he urged. We're almost there. They pushed on, their ammunition dwindling with every step. The superweapon loomed ahead, its barrel glowing with deadly energy. Zoran stood at its controls, his laughter ringing out over the din of battle. Just as all seemed lost, a shadow fell over the battlefield. Ryan looked up, his eyes widening at the sight of a massive fleet dropping out of the clouds. 
ships of sleek, alien design, their hulls marked with strange glyphs that tugged at Ryan's memory. The ships opened fire, lances of searing light cutting through the Zorgoth ranks. The invaders scattered, their formation broken by this unexpected assault. One of the alien ships landed near Ryan, a ramp extending from its side. A figure emerged, tall and slender, its features hidden beneath a shimmering helmet. It raised a hand in greeting, its voice echoing in Ryan's mind. We are the progenitors, creators of the Crucible. We have come to reclaim what is ours and prevent the destruction of all we hold dear. With renewed hope surging through his veins, Ryan rallied his team for one final push. They charged towards the superweapon, the progenitors at their side, cutting a path through the Zorgoth horde. Dr. Hoffman reached the control panel, his fingers flying over the keys as he installed the nullifier. The device hummed to life, its energy field washing over the superweapon. Zoran howled in rage, his hands slamming against the sparking controls. But it was too late. The nullifier pulsed, the superweapon shuddering and buckling. Cracks raced along its surface, glowing with an eerie light. Get down! Ryan yelled, tackling Hawk and Dr. Hoffman to the ground. The superweapon exploded, a blinding flash of light consuming Zoran and the surrounding Zorgoth. The shockwave slammed into Ryan, the world spinning into darkness. Silence fell over the battlefield, broken only by the crackle of flames and the groans of the wounded. Ryan pushed himself to his hands and knees, his head ringing. He staggered to his feet, searching desperately for his team. Ghost's eyes fluttered open, a weak smile tugging at his lips. Knew you could do it, Rye. Knew you'd make the right choice. Around them, the Denobulan and human forces rallied, the progenitors joining their ranks as they drove the remaining Zorgoth into full retreat. Cheers of victory rang out, but Ryan barely heard them. He looked out over the ruined landscape of Denobula Prime, the once great cities reduced to rubble, the bodies of the fallen littering the ground. They had won, but the cost had been higher than he ever could have imagined. Ryan stood amidst the ruins of what had once been a thriving Denobulan city, the acrid stench of smoke and death hanging heavy in the air. Around him, survivors picked through the rubble, their faces etched with grief and despair. The victory over the Zorgoth had come at a terrible cost, the once vibrant planet reduced to a shattered husk. We've got another group of survivors over here, Hawk called, waving Ryan over to a collapsed building. Together they dug through the debris, their hands raw and bleeding as they pulled the wounded from the wreckage. In the days that followed, the true extent of the damage became clear. The Zorgoth's weapons had ravaged the planet's ecosystem, poisoning the water and turning the soil to ash. The Denobulans, once a proud and thriving race, were now refugees on their own world. The Protheans, the alien allies who had turned the tide of the battle, offered their assistance in rebuilding. Their advanced technology could restore the planet's environment and help the Denobulans rebuild their cities. But tensions soon arose between the Protheans and the other races, the scars of the war still raw and bleeding. Ryan threw himself into the rebuilding efforts, working tirelessly to help the survivors and restore some semblance of normalcy. But the ghosts of the fallen haunted his every step the weight of their sacrifice bearing down on his shoulders. Ghost, still recovering from his injuries, struggled to come to terms with his past and the choices he had made. He spent long hours in the makeshift medical tents, tending to the wounded and grappling with his own demons. As the reconstruction progressed, whispers of discontent began to spread among the Protheans, a faction led by a radical zealot named Zalax believed that the humans and Denobulans were unworthy of the Protheans' technology, that they would squander it and bring ruin to the galaxy once more. Zalax's followers grew in number, their whispers turning to shouts of rebellion. They demanded that the Protheans take control of the Crucible, the ancient weapon that had brought the Zorgoth to their knees, and use it to establish their dominance over the lesser races. Ryan and his team now joined by a reformed Zine, raced to stop Zalax and his followers before they could plunge the galaxy into another war. 
they infiltrated Prothean strongholds, gathered intelligence on the rebels' plans, and sabotaged their efforts at every turn. But Zalax was always one step ahead, his cunning matched only by his ruthlessness. He struck at the heart of the rebuilding efforts, destroying vital supplies and sowing chaos among the survivors. In a final desperate gambit, Zalax and his followers seized control of a Prothean warship, the Crucible at its heart. They planned to use the weapon to destroy the human and Denobulan fleets, leaving the Protheans as the sole power in the galaxy. Ryan and his team boarded the warship, fighting their way through the rebel forces to reach the Crucible. Ghost, Hawk, and Zane split off to sabotage the ship's power core, while Ryan confronted Zalax alone. The two clashed in a brutal battle, Ryan's rifle against Zalax's crackling energy blade. They fought through the twisting corridors of the ship, the walls shuddering with each blast of weapons fire. In the end, Ryan emerged victorious, driving his knife into Zalax's chest. But as the rebel leader fell, he triggered the ship's self-destruct sequence, the countdown echoing through the halls. Ryan raced to the power core, his heart pounding in his chest. He found his team locked in a desperate firefight with the remaining rebels, the core's control panel just out of reach. With a final burst of speed, Ryan leaped over the barricade, his fingers flying over the controls. The core thrummed with power, the ship shuddering as it prepared to tear itself apart. Go! Ryan shouted, waving his team towards the escape pods. I'll hold them off! Ghost hesitated, his eyes wide with fear and desperation. Ryan, no, we can find another way. He shoved Ghost towards the escape pods, then turned to face the oncoming rebels. His rifle bucked in his hands as he fired, the corridors filling with the stench of ozone and burning flesh. The ship shuddered and bucked, the countdown nearing its end. Ryan closed his eyes, his thoughts turning to his fallen comrades, to Boomer and all the others who had given their lives in the fight against the Zorgoth. I'm coming, Boomer he whispered as the world around him erupted in a blinding flash of light. In the aftermath of the explosion, the survivors gathered to mourn their fallen hero. Ghost stepped forward, his face streaked with tears and soot. He placed a hand on the memorial they had erected in Ryan's honour, a simple plaque bearing his name and the words he gave his life so that others might live. "'I'll never forget what you taught me, Ryan,' Ghost said, his voice thick with emotion. I'll carry on your legacy, and I'll work towards the peace you fought so hard for. The Denobulans, humans, and Protheans, united by their shared trauma and the bonds forged in battle, began the long and difficult process of healing and rebuilding. They knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but also filled with hope and the potential for a better tomorrow. And as they looked to the stars, they knew that Ryan's sacrifice had not been in vain, that his memory would live on in the hearts of all those who had known him and in the very fabric of the galaxy he had helped to save. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.